What kind of a world are we living in? When the understanding of life itself is a difficult one. We get up in the morning and we don't even know who we are. How often you get up in the morning and say, I want to thank the God of Israel. Not thank God, because everybody saying God. You should separate yourself from that. I want to thank the God of Israel. Because I personally want to thank him, I could have died with how many times? But I keep coming back. And shocking a lot of people that I'm still here. They want me gone. But I'm still here. I don't know long, but I'm telling you. When my job is done, and he says, that it's time for me to go, I'm not afraid of death. But you can't kill me with whatever you do. I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be strong as long as the God of Israel wants me to do his job. And the young ones are being trained. They're not so young now. If you look at them, they're bald. They're gray-headed. And they're going to do my job. But the Israelite nation would stand. While others would fall around it. The day would come. The Bible says. And one would take hold of the coat of a Jew. Not a Kazarian. A Jew. And say I would come with you. Because I know that God is with you. If we understand. I would ask you. If you have faith. Like the philosophies. I would not say the other philosophies. If you have faith like the philosophies, we'll be a great nation. But when we know the history of this nation, you know how terrible we are, and you know how difficult it would be to be a great nation. Every time we climb, we develop the crab and the borrowed mentality. Everyone wants to pull the other one down. I want to go, but you don't want to go in a separate area. You want to pull this one down so you can go. Even if you're not qualified. What am I going to find in Exodus 32? I'll find relationship. A relationship that you never knew existed. But it did. When someone would read a story of Moses, we should always understand one thing. Moses was an Israelite. When we read that Bible, we should know one thing. It is by Israelite, for Israelite, about Israelite. Now these are the things that we need to understand. And once you understand that, that will give you that coat of armor that you need. When others are reading it, you should be in a position of laughter because you're supposed to know. It doesn't belong to them. You are giving them the fruit of a real story. The story is yours. Let's see what this story is like. And when the people saw Moses delay to come down unto the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods. Gods. Again, I rest my case. He was there that just came out from Egypt. They saw the miracles. They saw the plagues. They saw all these things that happened that Moses didn't do, it is the hand of God upon him that did it. When he says, I can't speak, God says, you're talking to me. I'm going to get somebody else to talk for you. Because God has a plan. You know, he always have a plan. From the time he created man, he had a plan. And every time he had that plan, 
It's not the Israelites or his family that tore it apart. It still stands today. I told the story that the enemy cannot really hurt us. The enemy can't because we have a border like a fort to protect us. Our damage is coming from within, always. Our strength is for that fort to keep the enemy out. But while the enemy is out, we have the struggle within. Moses is taking too long to come down. So let's find another God. That God that brought us out of Egypt now become null and void. He's been deleted, eliminated. I don't want you anymore. I want a new God, like you can buy a God and take a God off a tree. But that's not the way it is. You really did not see the power that he had. He's the creator of all things. He killed Pharaoh's son. He had given all the plagues that had been found upon this earth. But you do not see him being great. It is the same today. When someone is above, or in your words, great, you cannot see him because you keep looking for another one. So you eliminate that one, delete him, keep looking for another one. It says, let me go over it again. I like reading the first verse before you read into anything else. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up! In other words, get up! Make us gods which shall go before us, for us, that's this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, he would not what to become of him. No longer had to do with God. They forget what God did. It was not Moses, but he stood there. He stood as a representation of God, and whatever he said did happen. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Even he couldn't speak. But he says, I'm going to do it, and it was done. So all they saw was Moses. And Aaron said unto them, again, who was Aaron? Aaron was not a stranger. Aaron was not a black, white man outside. He was black just like them. He was Moses' brother. That's how it is with the nation. It's not the enemy outside. It's right here within. That's how it happens. His brother. The multitude, the strangers, call upon him. And he wants to listen to what they were saying. No longer but even his brother. God just deleted. And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings. So you know why we don't do that. Why we don't wear that. Break off the golden earrings. And you know when men wear earrings, you know what they are? They're everlasting slaves. And some of them are Christians. I see one pastor with earrings. And when and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. So they could read this now and say, You see, boys wear earrings then. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them in their hands and fashioned it with a graven tool. After he had made it, 
into a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods. These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. I hope you get my point. It wasn't a stranger. It wasn't even not an Israelite. It was Moses' brother. His family, his kins. So the closer you are uh, to someone, you must expect that one to do something to you. Because that's the way it was. And trust me, it is still the way it is. They asked Aaron, so you're his brother. I think the white man would have said, are you crazy? My brother went up there to talk to God. And you want me to do what? That's what a white man would have said. Because he wants power. The black man cannot recognize it. He does not even know who he is. And he received them in their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool and he had made it a molten calf and they said, These are thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is the feast of the Lord. We just had a feast. We just had a feast of tabernacle. Everything in the old days, we thank God by killing calves and bullocks, oxen, just so that we can thank the God of Israel for what he has done for us. Aaron is having a feast with some golden earrings that he formed himself. If you're going to worship an idol, don't worship the idol. Find out who made the idol. That is common sense. But it's not so common today. The sixth word says, And they raised up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink, and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, this is the important part that I want for you to understand. My lesson today, what it deals with. It deals how strong we are, how truthful we are, the type of people, the organization that's so strong, yet we can be weakened with people right here. There's no one can come from outside and touch any one of you. How could it happen? Within the wall. I remember I went to Washington a few years back and was talking to a professor who was telling me that they found a skull in Tanganyika. It's called Tanzania now. And the skull was 50, 50 million years. I called him a liar and he was shot. But I was with some brethren for them to witness how stupid people are. But he's a professor. And when someone came up to me and said, do you know he's a professor? I said, a professor, for what? I'm a professor for God. And you can't tell me that you're going to find a skull in Tanzania and it's 50 million years old. And Canada is a preserving country. I'm telling you how silly people are. A preserving country, six months, summer, 
Then you have winter. The war of 1812, what did they find? That's history. There was no trace. Tanzania had about 80 to 90 degree foreign heights daily with some rain. And you're going to find a skull 50 million years old. Why? Because you can't trace it. You can't go anywhere. All you have to do on your paper is put carbon 14 and carbon 16. And that's it. It's 50 million years old. Is it true? Is it true when they say that if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile? Is that true? When you become an Israelite, you'll begin to understand what it is that you should stand for. Put the wet cement on your foot so that you can stand firmly. Because when you stand in sand, it can wash away. Let's go back to what I want to say. I'm at the eighth verse, am I? They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. This is what God is telling Moses. You got to understand, there's two very powerful persons, one celestial and one terrestrial. They're there. And they're having a conversation about you and I. Why did I say you and I? Because I tell you why I say you and I. Because you don't know where your spirit came from. Your spirit could be the same people who were there. They don't have to be popular. You don't have to have Solomon and David's spirit. But you can have a spirit of those same people that were there. This is an opportunity what we have to train that spirit. Don't go back there. We have had enough. So it's time for us to turn. Those three dimensions you have in you is for you to take care of by the main one, the house, the tabernacle. That's the body. The other two dimensions just live in the body. The body is dead. But the soul and the spirit lives there and it's up to you to work on them. The soul is responsible for you when you're gone. The spirit is your life. So let's try to understand when we read about what these people did. Don't say it was those people. It could very well be you. It very well be. The spirit that was in that person that says, make the golden earring, could be in you. Only God can kill the spirit. So it keep moving all the time. In the Indian religion, when if you are Hindu, you can live and be resurrected and turn over and come back seven times. And according to how you live, if your life is terrible, you can become a dog. You can become a low-life animal. That's what they believe in. I studied the Hindu religion, and it's, it is something that you should think of all the time. There is a fear. Like the Christian fear for you was, if you're not good, you can't go to heaven. When the Bible says you can't. If you never come from up there, you can't go up there. But the Christian threat to you is to be good so we can all go to heaven. Even the pastor's dog going to heaven. So we can't see the threat. We're not strong enough to laugh in their faces. That is what is needed. Our strength of self. Moses and God, they're not talking like one superior and one inferior. They're talking like equals. Do you know Moses asked God to repent? And God repented. 
So why are you going to be there? And take it with Moses. So if you take it with Moses, why you go against him? Moses was a very powerful man. No man that lived was as powerful as Moses. None. No man can talk to God and tell him to repent. God would have said, do you know who I am? You didn't say that to Moses. He repented. I know I'm reading the scripture, but the story is so much in my head. God is telling Moses, look what your people is doing down there. And Moses is saying, it's your people. That's how important we are. The two most powerful beings in the entire universe, not even the world, are talking about you as family. Could you understand it? The two most powerful beings, celestial and terrestrial, are up there talking about you. One is saying it's your people, the other one is saying no, it's your people. It doesn't matter. The two most important and powerful people are still saying, you belong. And what are you saying today? Is it the 10th verse? No, the 9th verse says, and the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath, now wrath, is superior to anger. We need to understand that. Wrath is another stage up higher than anger. Now therefore let me that my wrath be wax hot against them and, and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. In other words, he's doing a favor now for Moses. He, he's not going to make a great nation for himself. He said, look what your people are doing down there. Move. I am so mad. But you know what I'm going to do for you, Moses? I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm sure you never see the story the way that it is. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does thy wrath wax hot against thy people which thou hast brought from out of the land of Egypt? With a great power and with a mighty hand. Wherefore, wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against your people. God? Moses? If you understand what's going on there, you would wake up tomorrow morning, look in the mirror and say, I'm an Israelite, and by God I cannot be removed. God and Moses is talking about you and I. Not somebody else in history. Your spirit could be right there where they were. That is controlling you today. The 13th verse says, again, remember. Remember Abraham, Isaac. How the hell can't you not feel something? How do you feel inside? How do you feel 
when you're reading this and understanding the power and the force that the God of Israel had for my people and yours, for my kingdom and your kingship. How is it that you feel when you would tell him to remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants to whom thou swearest in thine own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed at the stars of heaven, and all this land, and I have spoken of will, I would give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. How the hell would you feel if you're not an Israelite? My God, that I introduce to you is the most powerful God ever. You can kill me, but you can't kill him. He would revenge me from whatever it is. Think about what I'm saying to you today. There's a reason why I want to come up here today. I don't want to teach anymore. I have competent people that can do this job. I want to go to my backyard and get the four chickens. And I want to feed them and say that old word or old term that we used to say in the Caribbean, shh. Why does God have to do this? You're not going to ask God to make you a good person? That never work. You can't ask him to be a good person. That comes from you. Walk down before me and be thou perfect. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the 14 verses. And the Lord repented of the evil which he taught to do unto his people. This is not a church that you attend to. This is the church. This is the pillar of truth. And that is exactly what I want to talk to you about today. We're going into the darkness. We're going into Halloween. We're going into the day of dead. We're going into Christmas where everything is for the children. That's the threat. It's only for the children. So you get lost in emotion. On the tables, the 16th verse, on the table for the work of God, and the writings of the writing of God, graven from the fables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. This is something else we have to think about. Moses is up there. He's not drinking wine like some pastors do. He's not putting little things in the mouth of the Catholics do. He's not baptizing him in a swimming pool like some people do. He's there having a conversation with the most mightiest being ever. And there are the tables coming down with the commandments for this people. 
for you and I. And he had to smash it and break it so we live and substitute again. That was the original one. He's got to go back and make another. What happened? We're still the same way. We have the same heart. Everything that they had, we have now. Every nation, every race of people hates your guts. Everyone is above you. Even though you were here before them. In the United States, after the white man was a black slave, the Italians, the Chinese, and everyone come afterwards. And you're begging them for jobs now. Because you stayed away from the most powerful God ever. You want to fight the war, go to the school, do everything. Like if we don't have anything up here. God made us. Made us very strong. Made us very intelligent. He put the spirit of work within us. He did all of that. Then the Muhammad would come and sold us and what did they say? Allah would bless them because these people would not listen to their heritage. Now when the Quran was written, it said the prophethood was given to Israel. And Surah, Surah 62 said they should honor all these religions. How much is it that we think we know? about our own self. If you do not understand the power of your own spirit, I can't help you. There is nowhere in hell that I can help you. If you're in the side of truth, then something in here would open up and you will begin to understand the might and the power that was given to you. You can pick it up or you can leave it on the counter. 